What up gamers? I'm Jason. I'm Julie. And today on Dice and Dragons we are going to be reviewing Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders published by IDW Games and designed by Team Linvander. And as you can see Julie is back. Hopefully this will be more of a regular thing but I do think some of that solo content was good so probably see some solo reviews continuing on Tuesday in place of unboxings but that's just a little bit of the channel update. I'm gonna to toss it over to Julie, who's gonna take it away and tell you more about the game itself. So this is a cooperative card game um, that is played one to four players uh, in about 30 minutes. And I don't actually remember seeing an age. I would probably guess it's probably 12 and above. Does it? No, it says just on the back. It's not in the usual 14 and above, list. sorry, <laughs> I cheated. <laughs> yeah. Blame Four it on baby brain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 14 and above, and that's due to the content being based on the anime series Naruto. So what are you going to be doing in Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders? Well, the village of Konoha is under attack by Akatsuki, and unfortunately for those of you that are fans of Sasuke, he's on the side of evil at this point in time. So you will take on the roles of the famous Team 7, including their leader, Kakashi, as well as some other famous allies. And you must defend the village of Kanoha from the attacking Akatsuki. Now, there's gonna be ninjas that you must defeat. And then finally, there is a boss that you will then have to take on. And once that boss is defeated, you will have successfully defended the village. Now, did I miss anything, Julie? Don't think so. All right, so what time is it? Tell everyone. Well, now it's time to grab our drinks. Grab our best friend. We're going to take it to the table. We're going to take it to the table. It's good to have you back. It's been a little little too long, but uh, unfortunately, we can only really get to the quick games, but good for Naruto Shippuden to get it uh, reviewed by us. Not good for some of those bigger games I really want to play as well. We'll get there. Oh, we will. I'm looking at Tainted Grail. Expansions are coming. We still haven't finished the base game. Ah! Now let's take a look at the components for Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders, the card game. I know it says card game, but I like calling it the card game. So we'll start with the rule book. As you can see, it's a small rule book. It's definitely fairly easy to go through. You've got some important terms on the back, and then it just has some explanations for the different phases, modifying difficulty, as well as a rundown of basically what you have on the cards, and then of course, set up and how to play. I know some people probably find it weird that I like starting from the back, but usually some of the most interesting parts of the rule book are kept in the back. We've got these wooden tokens for the different attack types. We've got the red and the blue tokens for your health and your chakra. Then we've got this black bag, which these tokens are gonna go in, not your health ones and your chakra ones, obviously, but the wooden ones for during the fight sequence. Now we've got our six heroes. Kakashi Hataki, Naruto Uzumaki, Sakura Haruno, Sai Yamanaka, Rock Lee, and Neji Hyuga. Now we'll take a look at their decks in just a moment, but I want to go over here to the villains. So we've got four different bosses that are in the game. We have Deidre, we have Itachi Uchiha, we have Pain, and we've got Sasuke Uchiha. Now the way that these symbols work well, you're going to be drawing them from the bag, and that's going to affect the type of cards you can play when you fight them. So that's the importance of all of these symbols. Also, bosses have abilities related to chakra, and don't forget that they can generate chakra as well, unlike the ninjas. And there are multiple of these, but you're going to get a total of six different types of ninja. So keep that in mind. Bosses gain chakra, ninjas do not, but they do have a special ability. So we've got Conan. When revealed, choose one card from your hand and discard it. Kakuzu, when revealed, take one damage. Kisame Hoshigaki, when revealed, lose one chakra. Hidan, if you do not defeat this enemy after fighting, he heals himself. Very annoying. Tobi, when revealed, you would remove one damage from another enemy. And Sasori, when revealed, discard all jutsu in the training pool and draw replacements. That makes more sense when you uh, see the how to play. So let's take a look at some of the cards for the heroes. Now we're not gonna go over all their abilities. As you can see, they're very thematic to the show for those of you that know it. Lightning Blade, Chidori. So each card 
will have some type of chakra effect, meaning you pay the chakra and you get to use the ability. So for example, three chakra lets you deal two immediate damage. Now just jumping ahead a little bit to explain how fighting works. Well, once you, to win a fight, you gotta match symbols based on what's drawn out of the bank. So for example, playing this, Against Conan, if you draw a fist and spending she three chakra to deal two immediate damage, we then defeat the ninja. So as you can see, there's things like that. Draw one card. If you lose this fight, take no take no damage. Change the card from the the chakra type symbol or rasen gun symbol, as I like to call it, to a range symbol. So lots of different things that you can do. So with Naruto, of course, shadow clone. Rasen gun, if you win the fight, deal plus one damage. So if you deal two damage, you get to deal an extra damage at the end of the fight. Draw one card. For zero, you can gain one chakra. Pretty cool abilities. Taking a look at Sakura. So of course, she's got medical ninjutsu to help you heal. If you win this fight, deal plus one damage. Two so characters gain a total of three stamina in any combination. So it's a nice group healing. I do think that she's a great character to have if you're going to be playing a game with like, you know, three or four players. So with regards to Psy, change the type of card it is. If you win the fight, deal plus two damage. Pretty cool. Change the card to two of the other types. Deal one immediate damage. And you get an idea of what you get with his cards. Now we've got Rock Lee, the expert on Taijutsu. So if you win this fight, deal plus one damage. Change the type of the card. So change this card to a punch or a range. And if you win the fight, deal plus one damage. So that's pretty cool. And then deal one immediate damage. And then always a fan favorite, we've got Neji Huga. So eight trigrams air palm. If you lose this fight, take no damage. Reduce the boss chakra by two. Change the card to two, one of the other types. And that's what you have with Neji. Now you may be wondering what this other stack of cards is here. Well, first at the bottom, we just have the player reference card. So you can see the five different actions that you can take in the game, as well as the turn sequence instructions. So this is really what you're gonna follow every turn. And then these are the advanced jutsu pile. Now you might be wondering why they're all mixed together. It's because you're gonna be mixing them up every game. Even characters that are not in the game will come into play as allies. So let's say for example, we've got Naruto and Sakura in the game, a Kakashi card, a Sai card, Neji or Rock Lee will be able to be played as allies. Then you've got just generic upgrades like these ones here that you can use to upgrade any of your characters. Of course, the character specific ones only work with the specific characters. So there you have it. We've taken a look at the components, giving you a quick breakdown of some of the rules. So keep it right here as I'll be coming back at you with our setup followed by our how to play. Now I've selected my two characters for this how to play. We've got Naruto Uzumaki and Sakura. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take their six cards, shuffle them together, and then you're gonna draw four of them, creating your starting hand. That's why I'm gonna end up moving uh, Naruto shortly after I draw the starting hand and I take care of those wooden tokens, but I wanted to make sure that they were just on camera during this part of the setup. Probably wondering why we haven't done anything. Well, the game's really easy to set up overall. So you're gonna take all nine of these wooden tokens, you're gonna put them in the black bag. You can seal it up, don't really have to. Shake it up, get everything mixed in, and you're gonna wanna keep this someplace near the play area. So we're gonna just, got plenty of room down here, slide everything just a little bit over like this. So each player starts with four cards in their hand. You will never have more than a total of six cards. We'll place our starting hands face up, just to keep them separate from the other two. So you get an idea as to what we're doing. Now, for the boss, we've selected pain. So you can either shuffle up the bosses, deal one at random or select one. It's completely up to you. Now, as this is a two player game, we are going to be facing six ninja. If you're wondering how I figured that out, take a look at the setup page in the rule book. You notice it says for one, two, three or four players, how many ninja cards you'll be adding. So for 
two player game, it is six ninja. Now we take our pile of ninja here. As you can see, there are doubles of some of them. Doesn't matter if we have to face them multiple times. We will shuffle up. The deck. We deal out six cards. The rest are returned to the game box. I will flip over pain and the enemy ninja cards are placed above the boss. Then lastly, we're going to take and shuffle up all of the advanced jutsu cards. So make sure once again, you've got all of them in here, even the ones for characters that are not in the game. That's very important. And then we're gonna deal the top four cards to make up our starting advanced jutsu training. So just make sure we've got room for everything on camera. I believe we do, we have plenty of room here. So we deal out one, two, three, and four. Now, I'm very happy that Sai showed up because any advanced jutsu that is not related to a character that is currently in the game is placed at the bottom of the deck and you immediately replace it with a new card. Now, during the game, you will not be doing that. That is something that only occurs during setup. And lastly, we're going to take out a nice bag of chakra and health. I'm just gonna keep this off camera, but for the purposes of aim, you'll be able to see everything. Right up here, we've got plenty of room. A little tighter for, for Naruto. I'm just sorting the tokens. There, so we got a total of five health. You know what? We'll just place, move the bag up, and we got his five health and his three chakras. So you notice that collectively no player goes beyond eight. Now make sure to keep your chakra and health handy. You're gonna be needing it as you're facing the enemies. So there you have it. That's how you set up Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders, the card game. Now we're gonna teach you how to play. Now let's teach you how to play Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders. Now to do that, we will follow through with the turn sequence. We will play one turn as Naruto Uzumaki, one turn as Sakura Hono, and then we'll talk a little bit about the differences with the boss and how that works. So let's go through it. Well, I'm not gonna put this down. The first thing we're gonna do is the enemy attack phase, which will affect only the active player. Player one is Naruto Uzumaki, player two is Sakura. So that means for each enemy ninja that's revealed, so let's say it was Sakura's turn, Naruto had not defeat, defeated Sasori, she would then take one stamina damage from him being in play. Now don't forget, you can also lose stamina from losing a fight. Now the next step, so this is Naruto's turn, would be the enemy reinforcement step, which you would reveal a new enemy and apply its reveal effects with, if any. So Sasori's revealed effect is, when revealed, discard all Jutsu in the training pool and draw replacements. So all of these cards are get the, getting discarded, which, you know what, we'll place this card just over here. Still got a little bit of room and we now have to replace it. So we'll draw four new cards. So not too bad. We've got Sage Road, two allies actually that we can use. So that is pretty cool. Now the player may perform one action and the first action would be focus. So if I'd spent two chakra last turn, can gain back two, can never go past your max. Rest is the same thing with stamina, gain back up to two stamina. Now rescue, which can also be used on knocked out characters. So let's say Sakura had no health. I could rescue her by giving her two stamina and getting her back in the game. You can also just choose to rescue someone and heal them, giving them two stamina. So if Sakura's at half health, I could get her back to full health. Now, one of my other options is I have four cards. As you can see, I can decide to draw a card, taking my hand up to five. 
And that's something that you may want to do if you've got a strong ninja that you're trying to face. Now, the last thing is training where you will gain one advanced jutsu. You must discard a card with a matching symbol, and then you gain a card that your character can use. Now, the cards that my character can use that are currently available is an advanced jutsu for Naruto or advanced jutsu for any the power up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to discard. Let's take a look at what we have here. I'll get rid of the fist. Rasengan, so this card is no longer available. I draw the Sage Mode card into my hand because it's Naruto in Sage Mode, can't pass that up. You then reveal the next card. And after we've now gone through the player actions, we go into the fight portion of the game. Now to fight, you go into the bag and you will draw a token. So I'm gonna draw a few tokens out right now just to explain how the situation works with regards to fighting. Now don't forget we got a total of nine tokens in the bag, three of each type of symbol. Now if for example I draw the ninja star and play that, I've got a few different options as Naruto. I may play a matching symbol which will end the fight. If I do that in this case, Sasori was, is going to take and I've got, I'll use my own damage here, would take one damage and we'd end the fight. Luckily with the Rasengan, I could also spend a Chakra to deal an extra point of damage and that would defeat him. Now you may be wondering why he's only taking one damage. Well, we take a look at the symbols that are there, how many are out once we've matched it, and that's how much damage you deal. Essentially, it's also the amount of cards that you've played. So that is an option that I would have if I drew that symbol. Now let's say I'm trying to defeat him and I play something else. Well, we draw another symbol. Now if it's a punch or the other one, play would continue until these were all full. The moment you get a double of a symbol, the enemy wins the fight and will deal damage to you based on the symbols that are currently in place. So in this case, it'd be very bad. You would take three damage, which as you can see, can get you close to being knocked out of the game. So we've got my cards right here. I'm going to put my hand back. We'll take all these tokens and put them back in the bag. Give it a shake and we'll draw our first token. So we get the Rasengan symbol. Now I do not want to end this fight. I'd like to defeat Sori. So I got a couple of different things that I can do. In this case, I don't like too many of my options. I wanted to keep this card. This card is strong, but play that. Now, when you're playing an advanced jutsu with two cards, sorry, two symbols, you have to decide which one it is. For this case, it doesn't really matter as it doesn't match any of them. We'll say that it was the ranged symbol. Now, I could also play the ally card. So I've got Rock Lee as an ally and Kakashi as they're not in the game. I can use either of their symbols to either match and end a fight or just play the card to keep things going. Now we're gonna reach in and hopefully we don't pull another Rasengan symbol because that would mean that uh, the fight ends and I don't have a chance to win. So there we have it. We've drawn the throwing star. Take a look at what I've got here. Now, as I do want to potentially cycle my own deck, I'm not going to play an, an ally card. I will play my Rasengan, but you know what? I actually kind of want to keep that. That's a strong card. Great for defeating villains like Sasori potentially in one round. So what I'm actually going to do is play Rock Lee. I'm going to use his Shuriken symbol to match. Now, we've got two cards played, two symbols out, two damage to Sasori, meaning he'll be defeated. These will go back into the bag. Now your ally card though, once it has been played, is out of the game. Whereas this card will then be returned to your discard pile. And just for the sake of keeping things clean, my discard pile will be just, you know, behind my jutsu pile right here. And Sasori gets discarded, meaning Sakura will not take any damage at the start of her turn. So now we're gonna go into Sakura's turn. We reveal the first enemy, which is Kisame Hoshigaki. His reveal effect means Sakura will lose a chakra. Oh, and after I play Rock Lee, can't forget that 
I'm, I'm able to draw another card. Now, I do believe I may have skipped over this last time, which doesn't really matter. We have the Cycle Jutsu phase as well, which is optional. Now, it doesn't say so on the turn sequence. It does say so on the rule book. You do have the option to cycle a Jutsu card if you don't like it. Well, spend one stamina to immediately perform an action, so that's kind of cool. You get an extra action. I don't love these draw an extra card ones necessarily, so we'll cycle that Jutsu, and we're just going to reveal another one. Gives us an ally. So, player action, Sakura, just, do we want to train? Is there anything that's better than what we have? Now, there's really nothing that I love here that is better than what I have. Could you get the, I could see, so gain, so char characters gain a total of three stamina in any combination. See, this is a pretty cool card, but in two player game, I don't know if I'm gonna use it. I mean, normally I wouldn't get rid of it, but just to show you an upgrade, I will discard that. I will choose the gain one chakra since I did lose a chakra and reveal the next card. So there we go. Got my hand. Let's go into the bag. Reveal the first symbol. So we've got our shuriken. Now, great example here. I can either Play this to gain one chakra, keep the fight going. A little low on chakra, but as this is just a teaching game, I do want to beat Sasori, so I'm going to play this, doing the match to end the fight. He don't even take one damage, but as it's a Taijutsu card, by spending two chakra, I get the deal plus one damage to Kisame, so he has been defeated. Now, I do believe I neglected to mention this with Naruto. It's not that big of a deal. It's one of the reasons why I like to do two different player turns. Now this card gets discarded. My hand is at three cards. During the upkeep phase, I would redraw up to four cards. So at Naruto, as you can see right here, I'd go back up to four cards. Now once your deck is empty, it would reshuffle your discard pile when you need to draw more. So we've defeated Kisame Hoshigaki it would now then move back to Naruto's turn. No enemy attack. Would reveal the next card and keep playing. Now we're just going to skip ahead. Discard all the enemies. And we'll say we've arrived at the last boss, which is Pain. Now you'll notice that the way Pain works, he is two health per player, so a total of four health. Now, if you can, you can take him out in one turn. It doesn't have to be Naruto goes, then Sakura goes. So if you can deal four damage with some of the cards like this, they give you extra damage. Well, you can do it. But the important thing to note is that when Pain has three, three Chakra, he spends them to take a random ninja from the box and put it into play. How that works is that the end of every upkeep round, the boss gains one Chakra. So if he's still around in three turns, then you would... Now I'm just reaching over. These were the ninjas that weren't in the game. Now, the ones that were discarded were over here. So you would just draw a random ninja the moment he has three chakra. So that would be during the upkeep phase, once he gets three, you grab a ninja and put into play. And that's the only difference with bosses is they've got that chakra effect. They don't have a when revealed effect. So there you have it. We've gone over how you play Naruto Shippuden Village Defenders, the card game. Now keep it right here as Julie and I will be coming back at you with our review of the game. Naruto Shippuden, Village Defenders, the card game. What did you think of this game? Well, I like that it's a quick game that we can play. I mean, there's not a lot of those. I find that we quick fun games that we can play and, you know, before supper or while supper is cooking or things like that. So that's one thing I like about it. And one thing I do want to point out, there will be a card popping up that's going to take you to the unboxing. And the reason for that is... We also want to showcase just sort of the compact nature of the game and how easy it is to transport. So, for example, if you're going to an anime convention, you're waiting to see the latest Naruto or Boruto movie. I know they say they're done with Naruto, but you never know. They might have a new movie that comes out sometime in the future. Well, you can definitely play this in line mode. Well, not while it's moving, but while you're sitting out there camping out. It's the perfect type of game for those uh, situations. It doesn't yeah, take up that much table space. No, but it takes a table. I mean, you've got tokens. It's not just games, right? No, but 
I mean, for example, sitting on a floor, kind of like what we did, yes. you could definitely take it out and you can play it. Can't play it while you're moving. Yeah, you could play it in a con, like a Comic Con or something, while you're uh, waiting to get into uh, to one of those big halls. Yes, that's what I was saying. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I like that it's like cards that you play. Um, you know that that you're to try to defeat the uh, the villains and the boss. Uh, I think that's you know my kind of game. It that's that's lots of fun. Uh, it's an easy game to learn, uh, so that's an advantage as well. Yeah, no, I also, I like the components. I'm a little disappointed in the cardstock. You've already noticed a little bit of fraying in it, but uh, the art is good. I mean, it's mainly background layout. They're using art from the anime. So even though it's more of like a screenshot style, it works because this is a manga and anime, so you don't really need to redo the art. It's already at that uh that style that fits being converted into a game. I do like the fact that we do get some wooden components, not plastic chits. I also feel that that goes with sort of the theme of like ninja and when you look back on like even just the anime and then also back to just uh, Japanese history, you typically see them in like bamboo using maybe some like, you know, wooden attachments or wooden armor. So I do like the fact that we get the, those components. Now, as Julie said, the game was very easy for me to learn, very easy to teach, and it does have some cool mechanics as well. What is your favorite mechanic that uh, we have in this game? I, I think- Or maybe one that stood out that's different than we've seen in uh, other games. No, I think what I, one of the things that uh, I like was, I mean, I always like upgrading. I think I'm pretty consistent with that. So the fact that you can pull a card uh, from uh, from the available cards on, at the top that you can upgrade your uh, your jutsus. Yeah, I think that's uh, I think that was fun. I also liked um, the fact that it allows you. Uh, I mean, that's that's normal, but I like the fact that you could rest as well to you know to get uh, some of that energy back. I think that's makes the game play faster, and that was just something that it was uh, convenient. No, and what I do like about the different actions, and I just to highlight like what you said, is the fact that you could always fight an enemy, mm -hmm. and the fact and that rest action, acquiring a card action, you do have to make a choice that actually matters because if you rest, you cannot acquire a card. So keep that in mind while you're playing the game. But you don't need to upgrade. That's one thing I also want to highlight. Depending on the enemies that come out, the cards that you draw and what you have in your hand, as well as the ally cards. Now, that's something that I wanted to I mention. guess yeah, that's something I forgot about. I would say those ally were pretty cool because I think the first time we played, I never even upgraded a card. I just kept, we were lucky with the cards that came out. We kept using allies uh, yes. to defeat the, uh, the villains. So for those of you that may have skipped over the how to play, ally cards are advanced jutsu cards that are for characters that are not currently in the game. So you can take those cards and then use the symbols on them to match in order to end the fight or keep a fight going if you're really low on cards when you are facing the different enemy ninjas or the boss themselves. And that's a mechanic that I haven't really seen in any other game and I really appreciated seeing it in the game. And as I was mentioning earlier, just the fact that you've got those different sets of actions and that it is always a meaningful choice. There are plenty of games out there where you're not gonna be making a meaningful choice in terms of your action. You have you know a bunch of different things you can do, so you're never gonna have that stress. Whereas in Naruto, like, if things get out of hand, which didn't happen to us all that often, no. you will, have to rest and if you don't rest you could ba basically push it maybe defeat the villain but if you fail you're going to end up losing the game did we lose the game did we lose it or i just died i can't remember you you were defeated and i couldn't get you back because it was just a chain reaction i was low on health and we both sort of pushed our luck and then the next turn because you didn't defeat the villain i was going to be defeated automatically because if you do happen to be defeated another player can bring you back however the active player will still take damage and I just didn't have enough health which meant that we were both defeated so we only really lost once uh, when we played the game and that was due to some serious bad luck so just to clarify we played the game I played it as a solo game I played it two-handed and then we played it as a two-player game we haven't tried the three or the four player counts so what would you think of the game in terms of a, a two-player game was it challenging is it no, it's definitely an easy game. Uh, I it's it's on the light side, but uh, I think that serves its purpose. I think that's that's what it's 
uh, sets out to be and it, it intended to be. I find normally games that play this quickly aren't supposed to be that complex. They're supposed to be fun and, you know, so this was, it's an easy game to play. It uh, wasn't too challenging to you to win. There are variant rules in the back. So if you are struggling, maybe at four ninjas, it's much harder. There are rules to lower the difficulty as well as rules to increase it. And that's something that I always pr appreciate about a game design when you can get that level of variability. We've just played the game on normal and I've lost once when playing as Naruto to just push my luck and wasn't able to defeat the enemy ninjas. And then we lost that once with our uh, two player game. We played this about three or four times as two players. So I think I've got a fair amount of plays in this pile. Got almost 10 plays of the game uh, so far. So one thing I will say about the game and about strategy, and this will go, and one of the reasons why we didn't play at a higher player count is because I think this works as a general rule of thumb. If you can defeat the ninja, like the enemy ninja on the turn that it shows up, the game's gonna be easy. If you clear them every single time, once a boss comes out, you shouldn't have too much difficulty potentially defeating them. Especially if you're at a four player game where you'll basically get almost four stabs at defeating the boss. But don't forget, if you are fighting a stronger ninja and you also are in a situation where you may not have enough chakra or health, you may want to end a fight without necessarily defeating the enemy just to make sure that you're able to stay alive and you come out the victor and don't take any damage i don't think there's anything else to add i mean it's a, it's not a complex game so no and it's uh it definitely fills a nice niche this is definitely not a game that you're going to get everyone together to play on game night but it fits very well as a getting everyone started especially as a co-op easy to pick up and put down. I'd also say that once you know the game, you can play this in much faster than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Not sure at four players, but at two players, I'd say that this could easily be a 10 to 15 minute game. I don't know, almost. 10, but 15, yeah. 15, yeah. 20. Well, so once you know it really well, yeah. you never know when you're like playing really quickly. So do you have something to add before I give it my rating? No, I don't have anything to add. Go ahead and give it your score. So because of its simplicity, I'm going to give it a six. It's not a big game. It's fun. It passes, but it's a passable game. No, and I've got to agree with you. I give this a six as well. It's a game that we'll definitely probably keep in our collection. It's one that's fun. It's fast. doesn't take up too much room. It's really portable. It actually would have been quite useful for us to have it when we were uh, stuck <laughs> waiting for a new arrival. It would have been the perfect game for that scenario. So... I would just recommend maybe getting some card sleeves for it if it's the kind of game that you're going to get to the table on a regular basis as we've played about 10 times and we're seeing some wear and tear. Other than that, no complaints with regards to the components. So with that being said... So if you, uh, you can like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when we have some new content for you. And also down below in the video description, you will find links to all of our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you'd like to see pictures from Naruto, Shippuden, Village Defenders. They'll be up there on all of those feeds. Also popping up in front of us shortly, in front of me, you will see a link to our most recent release. And then in front of Julie, you will see a link that will take you to a related video. Not sure what it's gonna be. We've previously covered Robotech. We have some review games coming from Japan Anime Games. So you'll definitely see something that is anime related showing up there. Yep. So now what do we gotta do? And well, now it's time to grab our drinks again. And grab our best friend. We're gonna keep playing games. We're gonna keep playing games. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed this one. We'll keep I wasn't playing too games sure. when we're, we're not feeding or burping or putting the little one to sleep. Well, we'll definitely have a review with the two of us coming out on June 18th. Julie and I will just be discussing what we're going to be doing, but uh, you might see a few uh, reviews with the two of us in between then. I just got to look around here and find something that uh, we can get to the table without too much difficulty. You'll figure it out. Well, well you know what? Probably Marvel Champions, because we're finally getting those You're expansions. You're going to do that without me? No, well, it's easy to get to the table. Yes. <laughs>